Hello there and welcome to Live Music and Me, where we talk to some guests around their gig experiences over the years. Tonight's guest is the Scottish poet Stephen Mott. I hope you'll enjoy this one. All the best. Okay, Stephen, let's go. So the first gig that you went to? The first gig I went to, I was in Malta, <laughs> which isn't usually the answer that most people would give at the start. Um, and we'd hired a Jeep and we went down to the beach and there was a little known band, Ultravox. <laughs> so um, yeah, 13, I was there with my sister, my family, my mom, my dad. And uh, it was great, but mid year had left the band by that point already. Right. So um, I think for most of my friends, it was Oasis at Loch Lomond in 96. Right. And that would have been my first, but I made it in 1993 to, to Malta. So I still count Ultravox as my, my first gig. And on the beach, did you say? On, on a beach, on a yes. beach somewhere. Oh. Aye. <laughs> it's, not, it's not a bad start, that. <laughs> it's not bad. It's a bit different from the Glasgow Polo or whatever else people call out, you know. It's so. probably a bit cooler than a, a Maltese beach, but I. <laughs> well, well, yeah, maybe. Okay, cracking. Um, so the last gig that you went to? Um, the last gig I went to, I believe you were at as well, was Hamish Hawk at St. Luke's and the Wing Docks. Mm. And didn't quite live up to my expectations. Um, I'd had a, a busy day working on Loch Lomond, so maybe I was a wee bit tired. Um, had a few good songs towards the end, I felt, of the set. But um, I think I maybe bought into the hype a little bit. And um, yeah, it was probably one of the, what I would consider one of the kind of poorer gigs that I've been to in a wee while. Okay, interesting to see how he pans out because uh, there is quite a lot of hype there, isn't there? there is. so, yeah, absolutely. Good luck to him. Um, gig that most surprised you, good or bad? Um, in a good way, I would say, and this is again maybe a bit of an odd um, answer, but the Complete Stone Roses don't go for tribute bands. Mm -hmm. I think I've been to about three in my life, but um, I saw them in 2004 at the O2 Academy and they blew my socks off. Um, I remember piling up with an Irish lad that was there to come over specifically for this gig. And um, two weeks later, I went to see Ian Brown at the O2 Academy. And he wasn't half as good as the right. tribute band. Yeah. Work that one out. Yeah, exactly. But, you know, a, gig, a gig's good if it's good, right? And, uh, aye, oh, aye, aye. It's, gonna, can't, it's not always a science to it. It's just, it's just good, isn't it? You know, it's so, the beauty of it, absolutely. Yeah. Do you have a bad one? Uh, yeah, I think it was um, Mr. Hudson in the library, in Nice and Sleazy's. Right. Abs yeah. I, I think I was going to see Hercules in the Love Affair. I think I, I seen the H. No, it was Mr. Hudson in the library, and it was a honking gig. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, moving on swiftly. <laughs> uh, first gig you went to with a partner? It uh, would have been 1998, and I went to see Ocean Colour Scene at Stirling Castle, and they were absolutely brilliant. And I was wearing yellow shades and a big green kegel and thought I was the, <laughs> the mutts nuts. And uh, I, I really wasn't. <laughs> but they were, they were good. It was a good gig. Yeah, and did the partnership? Flourish or it, it was a fine three months. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Uh, a, a sort of good or famous gig that you'd a ticket to but missed. Uh, this is this one irks me. Um it was Bell and Sebastian at the Barrowlands and it was in 2010. And I don't know if you remember the the snow that we had at the time, Brian, mm. but it, it was absolutely awful. And I eventually managed to get through the Barrowlands and I said, um, I take it tonight's gig is off. You know, obviously people can't be out. There's no trains, no buses. No, no, they, they put the gig on and it was available to watch on the internet. And I remember I watched it that night and the barrows was half full or half empty. Mm -hmm. It just looked at the disgrace. I can't believe they didn't cancel the gig. Um, don't know if that was down to the artist or the venue itself, because I think the Barrowlands are superb for the way they, they take care of um customers and whatnot but um yeah pretty pretty disappointed to miss that one yeah but you'll have saw them other times i'm sure so, oh so, aye, aye. Yeah. i think last time was kevin grove bandstand or something like yeah. that so yeah absolutely okay um bucket gig in the past that you wished you had went to um i think i, I think i would have liked to have seen like pulp or the verve back in the day and um, fleetwood mac i think would have been an absolutely sublime gig but um, again, there's another one that irks me. Uh, in 2004, I could only afford one gig. There was two gigs I could go to. One was Air at the O2 Academy. Mm -hmm. The other was Craftwork at the Barrowlands. Wow. I chose Air. No, bad call. 
What do you think? What would you have chosen? <laughs> I'd have picked Crawford. I've never seen either of them live, to be fair. Yeah. I would have picked Crawford for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. a couple of my friends chose Kraftwerk and they, they testified it was the, the best gig they've ever been to, which just makes it yeah. all that more sore. <laughs> well, they, they, would, they would say that, wouldn't they? To be fair. Yeah. <laughs> oh, right. Okay. Um, so, best support act that you've ever seen? Um, I would have given a kind of a good case for the supernatural support in Ocean Colour scene at Stirling Castle. Mm-hmm. However, um, the one that first comes to mind is the delays. Um, in 2003, they supported Tim Burgess. Okay. Um, I just think Greg Gilbert was a, an astonishing frontman, poet, artist. And um, sadly, Greg died about a year ago with cancer, but um, incredibly talented lad. And um, songs like Long Time Coming and Valentine were just out around 2003, 2004. So um, I think that when we saw them in King Tut's, it's when you walk away thinking, I would go and see them in their own gig. Mm-hmm. I think that's always a, a real kind of testament to how the support band have performed. Mm-hmm. And then, I mean, Tim just could have called in sick that night and I'd have been happy because I thought the delays were so good. And did you get to see them when they, they saw a headline tour? Or? Uh, no, actually, thereafter, no. I'm trying to think what um, kind of followed thereafter because usually there's another kind of band that kind of grabs your attention, isn't it? You know, there's always somebody mm. just around the corner, like the Rapture or Interpol or something, and kind of take your attention away. But um, I suppose I was quite glad that I got to see the delays in such mm. a small venue that one time. I don't think I ever got to see them ever again after that. Yeah, yeah it's a good call. Yeah. Gig that uh, made you miss the last bus or train home. Uh, quite recently, um, October 2021, wet leg at McCool's. We, um, I mean, couldn't, 250 people squeezed out tickets. Oh, I couldn't get a ticket, mate. Best gig ever, Brian. <laughs> oh, you missed us. <laughs> no, it was, it was a really good gig. Um, yeah. I mean, the girls were standing right next to us when the support band were on. Um, being a, a guy of 43 years of age, I, I thought best not to be creepy and say anything <laughs> to them. But uh, the, gig, the gig was superb, and then yeah. we continued drinking. Um, and then we ended up having to pay about 50 quid for a taxi to get back down the road. Um, but I, it was, it was a Sunday it was night, worth it, was it? Uh, <laughs> it really was worth it. Yeah. And I think when you see kind of the, the ascent of Wet Leg in the last 12 months or so, and the Amazing. Brit Awards and the Grammys, you're, you're just like. God, we saw them in the cools, you know. Yeah. But, um, this someone is, asked me a nice moment. Someone asked me a, a while back about sort of the same question reverse, and um, I hadn't quite thought about it. Uh, and I thought, oh yeah, I do know. So I managed to see Big Country. Oh uh, yeah, in 1982, I think, or 83, mm-hmm. just pretty much just before they became sort of big. Mm-hmm. They played um, Glasgow Uni. With just country then. Uh, yeah, yeah, pretty much, actually. Yeah, yeah. nearly big country. And, um, and the same thing, you know, we kind of knew all of them. There was a bit of hype, obviously, around them. And they played that night and they were quite loud and stuff like that. And we were quite oh, loud. Yeah. I was 17 or 18 and we just we just brass necked it and stayed. And then I think we got a lift down the road in our, somebody's van or something. I can't really remember, but it was worth it for sure. You know. And if you, um, if you look at the press this week and Chris Moyles going on about how unsigned small bands are garbage and you just think, well, oh, you know, yeah. when you've seen like Big Country or Wet Leg in these kind of smaller venues, like Kasabian and Muse, I've seen it in the garage and stuff. You're like, yeah. that that's that's amazing. Like, I, I love those moments. It is bragging rights, but at the yeah. time, you, you kind of feel it in the air or something, don't you? It's quite electric. Yeah. Um, well, and you just well, know. Well, it's a great example, as you say, looking yeah. at them now. So um, yeah. that's a fantastic one. A bucket gig that you are still waiting to go to? Um, well, I've I've seen this artist, but I've been waiting 21 years to see this artist again. Okay. And it's the mighty Mr. Iggy Pop. Um, I saw Iggy at Tina Park in 2000. I saw him at Badlands in 2002. Mm-hmm. And I've, I've pretty much been waiting and waiting. I just, I'm dying to see Iggy again. Um, and I know he's got a new record out and we're talking about um, tour and stuff like that coming up this year in 2023. Um, but I'm due to become a dad in the summer and I just, I don't think I'd get away with vanishing off to Germany or France or something to, to see yeah. him. So um, yeah, hopefully he'll keep going for another few years to give me a chance. Yeah, because he has 
played some shows, but he's not done much touring really, has he, in the last no. few years? No. Yeah, because his last album, um, Free, I think it was, um, I got that, and it was a very, it was a real kind of departure from his usual sound. Yeah. And I'm not entirely sure if I would have enjoyed it live. I like it on vinyl, but um, I wasn't kind of too worried about not hearing him tour that live. Mm. But uh, his, his kind of new stuff just now, again, as I think would be pretty cool. Fingers crossed, mate. Fingers yeah, crossed. cheers. A gig that you travelled the furthest to get to? Um, I'm going to say a festival, if I can cheat a wee bit. But, That's um, fine. It was Benny Kassim Festival, and it was to see Leonard Cohen. And uh, that was in 2008. And, um, I mean, Leonard Cohen was just fantastic. The sun's setting. And do you know, one, one thing that really sticks with me from that gig was that my friend, one of my friends remarked about behind us up in the mountains, and he said, God, look at all the people. And you turned around, and I could just see mountain sides. I couldn't see anything. And when your eyes focused in, you just started to see hundreds and hundreds of people all sat in the rocks, all right. watching Leonard Cohen. It just They just kind of blended in with the, the rocks. And um, yeah, just watching him sing, like, Dance Me to the End of Love and stuff mm. like that. Sun, sunset in Spain, magic. Loved it. Yeah, that sounds brilliant. Would that be the best festival you've been to as well, then? Uh, no, actually, no. the best festival I think I've been to was Connect Festival in 2007. Okay. Um, they had the Jesus and Mary chain, the Beastie Boys, New York, LCD Sound System. <clears throat> um, and I think as well as that, I'd, I'd done Tea in the Park for about six years in a row, and then I'd done a couple of other festivals. So I was about 27 at this point, and just... Just that slight change, again, mm. a wee bit kind of sick of the wee bucky heads and stuff like that. <laughs> so, um, and then actually bringing back these kind of bands that, you know, that I maybe missed the first time round. And, yeah. Uh, it, was, it, was, it was an absolutely outstanding festival. Yeah, I'm hoping to go. My, one of my friends went to this year's Connect and um, was raving about it. And I was actually at the Hamish Hogg gig with him last week. Um, so right, kind of made, right. a, made a deal to try and get to this year's. Um, but it's in Edinburgh now, I believe. Connect. It is in Edinburgh, which is one of the reasons I didn't go last year. So, but, but, but the line <laughs> such is your really... hatred for the East. <laughs> no, purely logistical and, and my age. Um, but you Fair know, enough. there are a few bands I'd like to have saw, and hopefully, I think the lineups are always pretty cool, aren't they? So, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it was in for Eddie Castle when, when I saw it. And course, Yale, yeah. said that the lineups are just, yeah, a, a little bit um, nostalgic, but mm. still. Kind of with a lot of kind of cutting edge kind of like yeah. um, bands and stuff there, yeah. Absolutely, and um, band or artist that you have saw the most? Uh, Faithless. Faithless. Um, Seventeen times between wow. nineteen ninety nine and two thousand and nine, um, and God bless him, Maxi Jazz passed away there over the Christmas time, and yeah, uh, gutted, absolutely gutted because we <laughs> we used to we used to try and hire mini buses to go and see Faithless. And the coach company kept sending us a 52 seater. So there'd be like yeah. eight of us on a 52 seater, <laughs> like, with a driver. <laughs> it was outstanding. And then, um, you must, time... must have looked at VIPs or something when you were turning <laughs> well, up. Yeah. Funny you should say that about the VIPs because in uh, 2005, I won the Beat 106 competition for a limousine right. to see Faithless at the Battlelands. <laughs> and uh, me and five friends, it was ridiculous. And then, um, <laughs> the one thing that we never considered was the, the trip home. So you get a limousine up there. The gig went on until one in the morning. Right. There's no more trains. <laughs> so we were kicking about Glasgow, just trying to get a taxi, going, ooh, soaking with sweat and um, very, very, very drunk. But, yeah. uh, it was great memories. Good night. 17 times. There can't be too many limos that have rocked up at the bar. <laughs> no, yeah. no it, was, uh, it was a giggle. But um, I think that... The thing I also remember is when we got out the limousine, like everybody was like kind of shouting, get it back in the queue, get it back in the queue. And we're like, all right, fair enough, fair enough. So we walked down to the back and then this lady came rushing up with a clipboard and the headset on saying, hey, Stephen, what? Beat 106 winner? Yeah, follow me. She took oh, me to brilliant. the front and we were like, <laughs> 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 just walking our way up to the front. Yeah, so, yeah um, lucky, lucky get away with that. <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. Uh, yeah, it's good yeah, they yeah. were supported by like Razor Light and El Presidente and stuff. So yeah. there, was, there was a few good bands. Great lineup. I 17 times to see Faithless. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, your favourite live music venue? Battle Lines. Battle Lines. Absolutely. 
big tick box for a, <laughs> not everyone. I think the Apollos had a few shouts and um, Royal Abbot Hall, I think, a, a couple of calls as well. But uh, Barrowlands has been right up there. So I, I would have loved to have tried the Apollo. And I, I mean, I've heard a lot of good things about that as well. But I think yeah. MD of a certain age, if, if you're not saying Barrowlands, you're, you're not right. No, <laughs> you're one for the watching. <laughs> I, um, I was lucky enough to get to the last ever gig at the Apollo. Oh, really? Um, Who was it? Uh, Style Council. Oh, lovely. Yeah. Nice. So, um, yeah, it wasn't particularly nostalgic because you can imagine Weller's not particularly nostalgic, is he? But uh, <laughs> yeah. but as a as an event, it was fantastic. David F. Ross actually touched on that as well because he was at that. So he was there as well. I thought he might have been. Yeah. So. He's been a bit like, right? ah, Of yeah. course. <laughs> Any gig ever happened in Glasgow, David was there. David was there, <laughs> for sure. Um, so, a couple to finish, Stephen, your best ever gig? Um, it's a coin toss. Um, Primal Scream at London Olympia in 2010. A um, lot of memories go with that gig, but um, they were doing like Scream and it was it was a really really great night with the lads. Or a gig I had to go to myself because I couldn't get a second ticket, and it's in 2018 at the Royal Concert Hall, and it was David Byrne, our very own Dumbarton's very own David Byrne. Was and, that um, the Silver Box performance where he was playing on like a, a, an empty stage with the the mics? The, the mic top stuff? No. No, he no. had a kind of full show going on. Um, right. Several other performers around him. Uh, it, it was just insane. I mean, I was dancing my socks off. And I remember kind of at the start being really self conscious because I'm there myself, obviously. Big lad next to me was just giving it like that. And then just started joining with him and um, kind of burning down the house and all that stuff. It was just insane. But um, I wasn't even drinking that night. And I remember driving home and glancing to my right, I seen all these queues of traffic. And it was the night that the art school went on fire. Oh, and it, you know, people sake. that are trying to get into the city couldn't get in. I was like, so, and then obviously, because I've got burning down the house stuck in my head, and then art school fire. It's, oh, God. I always can associate the two of them now. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I think that was sometime in 2018, like March or June 2018, sometime but then. And he's outstanding, isn't he? I never saw Talking Heads. Incredible. Um, but I've, I've saw him solo and he was amazing. Um, he is amazing, absolutely. Clever, clever man. Well polished. Well. He's got a Dumbarton connection, hasn't he? Yeah, he was born in Dumbarton. Yeah, um, I think he moved away when he was like three or something. Right. So, but he's still one um, of your own, right? Oh, I. <laughs> we'll grab on to anything we can, you know. So, but I mean, like, do you know, do you put it this way? David yeah. Byrne, like one of the greatest kind of like post punk front men ever from Dumbarton. Ben Ellis, a guitarist for Iggy Pop from Helensburgh. Yeah. You know, it's just <laughs> my cousin's a punk band, you know, over in Canada. I was like, I'm like, yeah, all the greatest musicians come from the bottom. So that's, that's two and a bit. <laughs> I'll take I, what I can. I think it's two or three more than Inverclyde's got to be fair. <laughs> got the odd one, but not not too many. Yeah, maybe, um, maybe it's under like Brian Ferry will have some kind of vague connection to me. I, I'm, I'm looking. Uh, I'm looking. <laughs> and last one, one live album that we should all own. Um, I would say Bob Marley's Babylon by Bus, right. and um, I think I've got about oh, nearly 40 Bob Marley records, mm -hmm. but I do remember like all through my teens and my 20s, any kind of ghetto friends, if they didn't have Bob Marley in their collection, I gave them Babylon by Bus and said, get this in your CD player or your cassette player, whatever it was, and then uh, I'd go and buy it again myself. I think I've bought that record about seven or eight times. Right. <laughs> it's a nonsense, but it's... Um, Really, really uh, great records. Well worth yeah. checking out. Yeah, we'll do that, mate. Stephen, that's fantastic. Um, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Cheers.